Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, the D20 here. I know it's been a while since our last Shonen Showdown, which would, would have been episode eight. And I know I missed last week, so we're gonna have to do a couple of doubles for both One Piece and Black Clover, which had chapters last week and My Hero Academia was on break that week. So we're gonna go ahead and get into that. Also, before we start the video, um, definitely check out my link tree in the description. That's where you're gonna find my Twitch, my Twitter, uh, my other YouTube, my Let's Play channel, as well as this YouTube if, if you know, for any reason you're not already following, if you're watching this video from some other means. But anyway, definitely go ahead and hit the like, comment, subscribe if you like what you hear. Um, I definitely would love to discuss anime more with y'all. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm your boy, The D20, and this is going to be Shonen Showdown. All right, this week we're gonna start off with One Piece. We're gonna get again, like I said, there's gonna be a double. So we're gonna do One Piece chapter 993. We're gonna just kind of speed through it, hit, hit some of the key points, and then we're gonna go straight to 994, which is gonna be our normal in-depth discussion. All right, chapter starts off in the Flower Festival. Well, in, ugh, in the Flower Capital, I'm only one take with this, during the Fire Festival. Everybody is drinking, being merry, having a good time. There are decorations and everybody is just living it up and it's also here that we find out that the entire thing that's been orchestrated by orochi to tarnish the kozuki clan's name hasn't been fully realized because people are still still believe that one day the kozuki clan will be saved the, 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 the kozuki clan will come and save them but they figure that they need to endure until then. And one guy even, you know, unknowingly has the right idea. The battle's happening right now. But they will sing and dance and endure Orochi's torch until then. Then we cut over to Onigashima where Zoro and Drake are facing off against Queen who, is, who has unveiled a new virus, Freeze Oni. I, or, or excuse me, Ice Oni. Now Luffy yet again, during all the chaos wants to fight, but Sanji and even Jinbe have to remind him by, you know, taking out the opponents in his way. You need to save your strength for Kaido, just keep going. And, you know, that's just how, it, how it's gonna go. I don't think we're gonna really see anything from Luffy until Kaido, or maybe even one of the commanders, maybe King or somebody. But this entire thing, and even uh, Yamato running after Momonosuke and Shinobu is being watched by the headliner, Ba Huang, who is relaying everything to King, who is relaying that information to the Todoropo so that they can go ahead and go after them. And as they're running, they're intercepted by the armor division who are, it looks like they're under the direct command of Sasaki. Which yet again, I'm gonna say, cause he leaves the armor division, I'm gonna go ahead and really, you know, stick with my fruit prediction that he's either an, uh, an, a Triceratops, which some people are speculating, which I kind of agree with, or maybe even an Ankylosaur, which is another type of armored dinosaur, but, we're, but we'll see. He even go, goes on to, con to comment on how Yamato is interfering with their plan to, to eliminate uh, Momonosuke, but to which Yamato replies, because he's not interfering, he's fighting for the Kozuki clan. Now, up in the Skull Dome, as, as we've seen the last couple chapters, the Scabbards have really been laying into him, and even they've been able to, to kind of open up the old scar that Odin gave him. But, you know, still, he's, at least from the picture when he's down, it seems like he's relatively untouched. And as the scabbards move to remove his head, he even says that, you know, he saw Odin's visage and that's what's been kind of scaring him. And that was causing his scar to throb. But now he remembers that they aren't Odin and he, go, he goes to finish the fight. He then howls or roars, which actually sends out uh, some vacuum blades and to which one ends the chapter by slashing off Kiku's left arm. Yet again, that was 993. Um, not a lot happened. I mean, there was the whole thing at the end, Kiku's arm getting slashed off, but at least for me, Kiku's not that big of a character. So I'm like, yeah, you know, that's cool and all, but okay. But yet again, who knows, maybe 994 will be a little bit more eventful. All right, and the chapter picks up exactly, well, excuse me, One Piece chapter 994, my other name is Yamato. 
Now the chapter picks up exactly where the, old, the other one, 993, left off with Kiku falling to the ground as her arm was severed. And let me see. Um, we also see, you know, Kaido Kai uh, beginning another attack while some of the remnants of the beasts who were on the Skull Dome are still, you know, getting their bearings after Kaido's attack. Now, Dogstorm tells the remaining minks who are yet again are still there, you know, hey, y'all need to get away from here. Sh like, shit's about to hit the fan. Now, the scabbards um, raided themselves with Kinemon lighting his sword on fire to cauterize the stump that um, was left with Ki with Kiku's arm being severed. To which, he, to which after doing so, he asks, can, can she stand? To which she says, of course. Which, that's some G shit. Like, to get your arm cut off, and to have to go through the, not only the cauterization process, but also to, to, to stand up and continue to fight. <coughs> Look, Kiku's a real bitch in my book. But Kaido watches this and he even laughs and, and, and you know, he not goads them, but he comments like, you know, that's it. That's that samurai spirit. That's the samurai sense of determination that I love. He, he says that he, that he loved the way of the samurai Roger, Whitebeard, they did it right. And he even says that it may not be the way of the times anymore and finally transforms to his human form, but death is what completes a person, isn't that true? And he even says, it's time to end this. Let's end this fight. You know, I, I'm guessing Kaido's finally gotten tired of the bullshit and he's, re he's ready to really end this. And to which Kinemon states that there's no glory in losing him. We cut back on to the first level of the castle, where yet again we have Luffy running and while Jinbei and Sanji fight off all of the beasts incoming yet again. Ooh, we're not gonna get much from Luffy, if anything, but yet again, I kind of figured that because it's cause it's like kind of like an RPG. Like especially because um I'm playing a lot of RPGs lately. But yeah, it's pretty much, you know, you you know you got, or in Pokemon rather, you know, you're, you're going to the gym leader and you, and you know, you got to save your strongest Pokemon, make sure they don't expend all their energy on Riff Raff so that when the final battle with the gym leader comes, that Pokemon will be ready. But anyway, they then are, their path is interrupted by two headliners by the name of Vortrix and Hamlet. Now, these are some freaky looking motherfuckers if I've ever seen them. Fortrix ate a chicken smile to which his face is the chicken's ass. Like, pretty much, it looks like, instead of looking like a human ate the chicken fruit, it looks like a chicken ate the human fruit. Because his arms and head, his, his head's pretty much under the chicken's tail. And his arms are coming out of the lower end of the chicken. And then Hamlet, pretty much, his back grew into an entire giraffe. But yet again, they look stupid and Sanji and Jinbei kind of just kick their ass and tell them to stop growing like that. Yet again, with the Ice Oni, King, uh, not King, Queen is just making it hell, like the ninth, the ninth circle of hell in there as the disease spreads to the samurai and everybody and even the, um, the, um, the beasts themselves aren't immune to it. Like he's trying to clear, he's trying to clear the deck in the worst way. Um, and even the Oni Wabanshi were like, uh, this isn't good. Like, even they, even though they're like, hey, we had to join Kaido so we don't get fucked up, they even they're like, okay, this is a little excessive. And even one of the samurai, he goes to try to end, try to end his own life, because, you know, he, was, he doesn't want to become one of these Oni who begin to just rampage and attack their friends, but then, you know, Hero Girl cut, says, says that he'll cut him down so he doesn't have to endure that disgrace. Um, and Chopper, even, he's like, okay, I want to cure this, but we're in the middle of a fight. I can't do it. But he, but he then goes on to say, but unlike back in Udon, the mastermind behind the virus is right here. So if they can get the queen or like queen should either be immune himself. Like I, like I take it to mean that either queen is immune himself to the virus or he has the antibodies on him. Cause it's like, okay, if for some reason he does get affected, he has to be able to cure it himself. I doubt he he want to suffer at the hands of his own shit. And then 
chapter one goes on that um say that he's more worried about the after effects because they're becoming ferocious and rampaging while their while their skin's freezing, and the body can't handle that kind of stress. And he then goes on to say that Apu is the only person with the antibodies to which uh, Apu, as he, he calls to him from a Dindin Mushi, and Apu is holding the antibodies, a formula in a bot in a little vial himself so pretty much now everybody's chasing after him and if he can keep it away from him for one hour everybody dies so we go back into the, to the brain tower where Yamato stands over them saying that you know he's he's gonna take care of this and we see that in a brief flashback Yamato was a little person who was in who was in uh, the, the Hanya mask back in the day so if we so if you go back and you see that person behind your mask that was him so he was he says that he saw shinobu tell everybody that hey odin's not the man you think he's not a fool and that sh that, that he saw that and that is what truly put him on the side of kuzuki odin to which he is blasted you know pretty much even king and them have to have to come to realize yeah yama this isn't one of his little tantrums he's a full-blown traitor they gotta get rid of him but as he is blasted, we see that he is damn near uns not well, not unscathed, but he tanked their blasts. And he's he even used his Bagua to send one of the headliners under Sasuke's control blind. And he and, and um, Momo asks, Who are you? I used your father. He said, Who are you? To which Yamato replies, I used your father's name earlier, but my other name is Yamato and I would die for you. Concluding on 994. Um, not a lot happened in 994. Of course, you know, I figured they were gonna have to come up with some way to cure the the ice on it. Um no art still looks good, you know, you know, old as art is old as art. But with these last couple again One Piece chapters, not a lot's happening. I mean, like, even with the scabbards teaming up on Kaido, it's like nobody really did any damage. It's like, okay, I know they're doing damage but they haven't done enough damage to really put him down even now he transformed to his human form he's he's done with the bullshit there's no more bullshit with kaido he he wants us to end and he's ready to take to turn the fuck up on them um so yeah there's gonna be that so you know that tide's turning now with kaido in now with kaido of sound mind luffy probably kid and a couple others are gonna have to take him out you know when, once he's been weakened to a degree but he's not gonna be so weak. He's just gonna gonna kill over when they get there. So there's that. But yeah, nothing substantial. Um, I wouldn't call it a weak chapter. I'd just say it's in eh, middle of the road. Just it's like like we're just chugging along until the next thing happens. And I'm really hoping we, we get some of these Toby Ropo battles because that's why I'm really you know I think that's what's gonna be really what you know kind of turn turns it up a little bit for me, especially finding out some of the devil fruits, um, and their fighting styles and how strong they are. Um, we already got Ulti in page one. They've pretty much been sequestered off uh, to fight with Usopp and Nami. And we know that, um, who else? Who else? We don't know who Black Maria is gonna fight. I think I think that's gonna be a Robin. But yeah, yet again, that could change. Um, Sasuke, I originally thought was probably gonna go to Jinbei, but it looks like Yamato's gonna take out Sasuke. Um, and who else? Um, I'm wondering who's who, who, who's who, yet again, that's a mouthful, is gonna take on. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. Next, we're gonna move on to My Hero Academia. All right, next we're gonna be talking about My Hero Academia number 289, Miss Candid and Miss Shuttleway. All right, chapter starts off with Ida running while Hado follows him while they speak about why <clears throat> they're going where they're going. They've separated from the other heroes in 1A and they talk about who's gone missing and how they're going to uh, find them um particularly talked about Deku and Bakugo going on their own or excuse me, well Deku and Bakugo and Togoro going on their own um and how he's gonna teach them a lesson uh well how they taught him a lesson by not going off on his own and doing stupid shit and how they're his dear friends we then cut over to Izuku and Shigaraki falling from the sky after their clash motherfuckers fell for like three weeks damn um, to which both Midoriya and Bakugo are caught by Midoriya. And it's here 
that Midoriya, not not with not, not caught by um, Todoroki. Damn, fucking up these names. We're only doing one take. Yeah. But anyway, it's here that it's confirmed that Bakugo is alive. He is not dead. He is bleeding from the mouth. He definitely needs some help, but he is not dead, like I thought. Um, but yet again, that quirk. Um, don't know about that part, but we're gonna keep going. Um, Todoroki wants to go ahead and, you know, give him first aid. And as he's, you know, taking a step, well, well, taking a second, you know, go ahead and do that. It's then that they all notice in horror that Tomura is still coming at them. And we then see that Tomura is still torn up. You have his master, all for one, and him going back and forth with all for one telling him that he needs to go ahead and retreat from the battle but Tomura wanting to continue his onslaught saying that all for one isn't the boss of him but we're then but we're then he's then interrupted by a spiral blast from Hato and Ida shows up on the scene and he then goes on to warn them that a gigantic villain being Giganto Machina is heading for them and he, they've already informed the other heroes who are fighting the Nomu and you know Manuel notices Ida with Todoroki telling Ida that he needs to get Midori and the others out of here um, which Ida replies you know seeing the surveying situation and seeing Tomura's state he knows why he didn't return and we then see Manuel in another panel cradling um, not Shigaraki um, Grand Torino and Ryuku is looking fucked up to which Hado notices and she does not look happy she is because remember Ryuku is her mentor and to see somebody who you respect and look up to in such a sorry state not gonna do a lot for your mood Midoriya then tells everybody that he has to stay near Shigaraki still coming after him and that they should just take Kachan and Endeavor who is also a Endeavor but Instead of doing that, Shoto makes an observation saying that the, the, regenerative, the regenerative, I can speak, powers of, of Shiraki have, have slowed down and that he's seriously weakened. To which, you know, Shigaraki, who's not even really paying attention, just says that there are many little maggots crawling around. We cut back into the building with Toga and Ochako. Um, with Oshka, with Oshka throwing Toga, and then getting on her feet and taking a battle stand, saying that she's far stronger than the first time they fought. And Toga gri gripping her knife, you know, ready to, to assault her. Oshka then thinks that she needs to make direct contact without getting her blood sucked out. But then, before they before they fight, Toga tries to speak with Oshka. But Ochiko really isn't in the mood for it, so, so she goes ahead and rushes toward her. Toga says that when she loves people, it makes her want to become them. This desire to take all their blood for herself gushes up so she just can't stand it. She says that she gets all emotional thinking about it, and that's just how she is. But other people aren't like that. She says that it's hard for her to live like this. This one nasty lady said that her normal was sad and miserable. And then, guess what? She tried to kill her. I believe this goes back to the reporter lady in the My Villain Academia arc, who was a uh, yeah, she was a reporter, and who had the, I think she had like a control no, not control quirk, a bomb quirk. So Och Och not Ochiko, Toga then goes on to tell her that she used her blood and quirk to drop her from way high up, killing her. She says that drinking the blood of someone she loves gives her the uh, gives her their quirk. And she says she was so happy when it happened. We then see that Toga, that not Toga, but um, Ochiko's upgraded her suit with whip-like protrusions, kind of like, kind of mimicking um, Sero and Deku, who also mimics Sero's black whip. But Ochiko has also got a bunch of syringes attached to cords, so they can have kind of like a mid-range battle, which knocks um, her back. And we then see that the that a TV was broken, and and that says Kut at present. So it's probably reporting on the attack going on in the city, but because they're so enthralled in the battle, they don't notice. T 
To which Ochiko says, from what in response to what Toga said, that she would never take think about drop that she would never feel happy about dropping the person out of the sky. And she asks her, what what's her point? What is she trying to tell her? Toga then looks at her, kind of puzzled, looks down, and then we see that she's taken the All Might charm that I think she was either gonna give him give to Midori or he gave to her. And she says that she dropped it. Ochiko then goes to give it back, but Toga runs away, stating that it's precious to her, and to which Och Ochiko says that yes, it is. And she says, well, Jim was like a precious big brother to her. We're the same, because I know you like Izuku. She's always felt that, so Izuku must have given it to her, which says, yes, she, he did give it to her. Hold on. Ochiko then keeps trying to go after her, saying that she can't waste her time on her. But when she goes, when she rushes her, she just dodges. She says, I, but then instead, she uses the cords coming from her gauntlets to spread her quirk to a bunch of objects to which she calls her zero satellites. She says she has to shut those feelings away. Well, and then she explains through thought that she, that, um, she touched all that stuff when she knocked when she got knocked down. So this whole time she hasn't just been getting knocked around. She's actually been kind of planning her next onslaught. And Toga agrees with her thought that she has to shut those feelings away. And then Ochika uses her uses the cords to whip the um dev the devices kind of kind of like maces or well yeah kind of like maces because they are attached to something or like you know weighted whips. I should say. And Toga, as she's being assaulted, says that she's held it in for so long. When she was little, I was told to stop being me. But that just doesn't work. When you shut your feelings away, it only grows inside. To which Ochiko then replies, Himiko Toga, if you're gonna live as you please and threaten people, then you also have to live with the consequences. And she then just looks and stares at, Ocho at Ochiko and says, right thought so she says thanks for that bye bye to which she she, she attempts to leave but at, as she exits the building we see Fro Fropi ask uh, see, see what's going on ask why is Himiko Toga there to which Himiko says hi Suyu and to which you know Fropi says don't call me that that's only for our friends but you know Himiko Toga is kind of fucked up in the head so she thinks she's her friend so they try to pursue her, but they notice that she that she's gone. She may be aiming for the and oh uh, goodness. Ochiko states that well now Froppy states that she may be aiming for the blind spot, so they need to stand back, anticipating a sneak attack. But Ochiko, kind of feeling you know what happened, she no, no she ran away. We, we then see the T the you know TV keeps saying stop won't the giant villain getting bigger won't stop ah we're losing live feed airwaves are and then cuts out we then see toga think ochako we like the same boy i thought maybe we could confide in each other about love i'm going back to the league my confusions are all cleared up and then ochako you know picking up her pendant her all might pendant she even says that, she, that ochako was crying probably about game we then cut back to the battlefield with tomura and this motherfucker is going off he's got these tendrils that are holding him up and they are going everywhere as he's trying to hit hado but in the background we see giganto finally getting closer and shit she's about to come to a head as as everybody you know looks on at what's happening dobby look, looking quite happy but everybody else looking kind of fucked up. And that's it for My Hero Academia 289. Um, another Toga chapter, um, pretty much. It's moving the needle. Um, I hate Toga personally. Like, I think she just needs to die. Like, I like I'd rather she died than twice, but hey, twice had, had twice had to go down. But yeah, art still good as always, you know. The fa like these characters looking so fucked up and and Horikoshi just using the black and white and just it's just dope as hell. 
but I can tell, well, we're getting kind of to the climax of this. I'm like, I'm kind of over it. Not in like, oh, it's not good, but I'm like, I'm ready to see what's next. Not just like the next chapter. I'm even after the arc. Like, cause we all know Tomer's not gonna be defeated here. I mean, the Bakugo and the Endeavor get their quirk stolen is like, what's Hero Society gonna look like after this? Cause so many people have died. So much destruction has been caused by a fight between heroes and villains. So the world was already teetering on the edge of chaos. So this, I'm ready to see the aftermath and what this has left the world in. But that's it for My Hero Academia this week. Next, we got a double dose of Black Clover. All right, we're going on to Black Clover with yet again another double dose. And we're starting off with a quick read of chapter 269, of page 269. The one who can't use magic. This starts with the other chapter left off after Lieb describes his backstory. Asta can sense um, using well using his ability to sense key, he can sense the anger and hatred coming off of Lieb. So then they begin to fight, with Lieb yet again using the Demon Slayer sword that he that he's using that's infused with his anti-magic to you know levitate and move it. But Asta then punches them in the face. Pretty much, Leib's power is anti-magic. Asta can't use magic. He's not at that big of a disadvantage, but Leib can use his magic to manipulate the swords, uh, the demon slayer, dweller, destroyer, and even the katana that was left inside the book from, from Yami. So he can use all those, but before he's able to use the katana and well, flood the katana with anti-magic, Asta catches it, so he has one sword to use against Leib's three. But, Asta displays some surprising pow prowess with the magic sword, which we'll touch on in a minute. But we then find out that after being sealed in the book, Lieb was angry and he began to stew in his anger and rage towards uh, the ma uh, magic users. He, and, well, specifically the devils that ruined his life. And it was at that point that he manifested anti magic. So, magic comes from a person's growth or a person's emotions and feelings he hated magic so he developed anti-magic which actually kind of makes sense magic is one of those things where you know emotion personality and things of that nature can directly affect it so it's like okay can't call it an ass grab he hated magic and his body was able to respond to that he was, was able to respond to his emotions and give him the power to destroy magic not so far-fetched but anyway asa then displays surprising grace and agility moving around the battlefield to which we see visages of other people he's fought such as do the dancer guy I can't remember his name who he fought who he fought in the water temple and then we start to see him use other moves such as captain yami and is then that he got all he got all this a, being a guy who's fought a ton of insanely powerful warriors, specifically magic swordsmen. We see the likes of Lit, like I said, the dancer guy, Denzel from the King uh from the Kingdom of um, Diamonds, and even Damn, can't remember his name, the guy who used diamond magic, and Yami himself. He's fought some pretty powerful magic users. So well magical swordsmen specifically, so He's pretty prepared for this, and he is with that, he's able to land a thrust and knock out Lieb. But, like I said, that was a quick read, and now we're on to Black Clover, page 270, together, which picks up right where the other chapter left off. After Asa's thrust, he's then able to claim victory over Lieb, and then a collar with runes appears around Lieb's neck, and it is then chained to the ground, which Nox says, well done, and that the preparations for the devil binding are complete, and that now he'll be able to make a contract with the devil from a position of total dominance and make the devil his servant, and that way he use its power at his own will. And he says that by doing this, the devil will have no right to refuse, and he'll just have to think, obey me. Once he does that, the devil will serve as his familiar, and you know, he'll have to obey all orders and observe the rules he sets and he says that is the path that asta should take in order to become the ultimate warrior and asta acknowledges and says in that case Lieb should be his friend 
to which Lieb is really surprised, like, what? Lieb uh, retorts, devils don't even know what friends are. And Asta kind of tries to explain it, you know, friends are people who are equals, but Asta being Asta can't really explain it. To which not, yet again, having that same, like, dull smile, on, well, same blank smile on his face, say, are you attempting to make an equal contract with the devil? And then Asta, you know, just plainly states, like, hey, as I said before, he's the reason I've been able to fight. And it's just, he, even though they've, they've been working kind of in tandem, they've been separate in that. And he says that he wants to learn more about him and know more about him, so he'll start making friends. It's then that Lee, Leap opens his eyes and his, his entire demeanor changes. So he then begins to question Asta, saying that he has no guarantee the devil will listen to him. And that, they, that there's no point, no merit in a contract like that. To which Asta just last says no. And that he then continues to say what he was saying a couple chapters ago. He wasn't fighting seriously. He kept saying kill, 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 but he was holding back. He, he then goes on to state that the devil, Lieb, is the type of person who can't kill people. You can hate or be sad for somebody else's sake, right? He's in, but he then states, in that case, we can get along. That's why I want us to be equals. He, he then goes on to say, this isn't a, a ritual for devil binding, it's devil friending. And then the four devils that Nakis has under his control... They manifest as little ch in the little chibi forms above him. It looks like some type of hooved animal, like a moose, well not a moose, like a deer or some shit. One's like bird-like. One could potentially be either a pig or like a bear. And the other just, just like a run-of-the-mill imp. The one who's imp says the kid's a moron. To which, you know, knock the grease. And back over, Asa's continues talking to Lieb, says, hey, we want to take out the same people. Let's crush them together. To which Lieb says, he really is a total idiot. But while saying this, he thinks to himself, I don't know where the destiny exists or not. And Asta asks him, what's his name? And he then flashes back to a time when he was with Lan uh, Lasita and to which she gave him his name to which he reveals he really is let's see this kid saying and he shakes off his hand while stating that his name is Lee to which the same type of um, rune appears on Asta's left hand as well as Lee's and then his arm comes back since you know the battle is over Lee walks forward into the circle saying that the contract is complete I mean, he then goes on to say that the contract is unprecedented. Who'd have thought you were this foolish, except that you made the right choice? So it seems like Lieb, not, well, not Lieb, Lick, not, not Licked, Knocked, Knocked, not in his name. Oh, speaking of which, Knock's name, Knocked, like Nocturnal, kind of makes sense. I got, I, I got that weeks ago, but I never said, I don't think I said it on, um, on the review when, he, when I was first talking about him. But anyway... So it kind of seems like he meant to, he, he was, he's that person who likes to come off a certain way to teach people a lesson. So all that stuff he said to the Black Bulls may have not have been sincere. It may have just been a ploy to kind of get them to straighten up their act and really motivate them. But until that's proven, he's still kind of an asshole. But then he states, however, and the imp devil then goes on to, goes on to say, goes on to say, we're up, goes on and comes back out of the well and comes back out of the ground in its full big mast form but the mast is like a dog so i guess it's supposed to be a dog it's supposed to be well it does, it does in this little imp form have puppy dog ears so i guess yes that's a dog not a, just a run of imp but when it comes out of the shadow people who are right aren't necessarily rewarded and so get stronger so the dog devil fuses with him and Yuki Tsubasa must have been a Bloodborne fan because not form here, the cloak, the hat, looks just like, in, in, oh, excuse me, the greaves too. Well, boots, boots are greaves, boot, boot greaves, brutes, well, groots, breaves, whatever the fuck, looks straight out of Bloodborne, like like the hunter character in that, the um, first 
Well, first, the main outfit he wears in order to keep yourself from losing to unjust evil. He then goes on to say, from this point on, what you call training begins in earnest. They have to defeat him in order to get stronger. So apparently, so pretty much the technique that Nock's using is like, okay, if y'all can figure out a way to beat me, you know, through practical, through, through practical application, they should be able to beat him and, some, and figure out how to work together truly doing this. But let's not forget, they got like two and a half days because this is, I think it's still like sometime in like the morning or afternoon of that, of the, of uh, that day. It's, it's the next day. Um, yeah, so I think it's still like two and a half days or a day and a half or some shit like that. So they haven't got a lot of time. So they need to, so they need to figure this shit out quick. But that is the end of the chapter. I'm um, really liking it. I like the design of, of Leek's uh, form when he's fused with his dog devil. I, I like the Bloodborne. I love Bloodborne. I still need to finish the game. I've never finished it. I know how the game ends, but I still need to finish it. But I'm digging that look. That look. And just Asa's character and the big reveal that he is Lacita's kid. So I kind of had a hunch that, you know, when she was showing her leaving her baby, that, you know, it was him. And it was. Well, that's thing she looked like him, so I was like, okay. And Asta and Lieb are brothers, not really brothers, but they call Asta's biological mother is the woman that he called, that Lieb called mom. So they're kind of brothers. Um, and it's finally been revealed completely that you know and Asta, they don't come from the same place, which yet again we knew, but they really have no connection. So them ending up there at the same time was pure happenstance. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this training. It looks like it's gonna be dope. And let's go ahead and get on to the awards. Dun, 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 dun. Pulling up gold, Black Clover. It's just been doing it for me. It just has, like, just just the character interactions, like Asta coming to, coming to grips with all this, and on top of that, getting his backstory and learning about the devils and the devil that he, that he has, dope. Um, pulling up silver, gonna have to be My Hero Academia. Like, Korokoshi's art, art has been just, um, pulling that series forward, just how gruesome and gritty it's been. And then, you know, we're still chugging along. Bronze is gonna have to go to One Piece. Like, I love One Piece, it is a, it's my favorite series out of the three so far. But these last couple of chapters, it's basically been just, it's pretty much been damn near the same chapter. Like, Luffy wants to fight, can't fight, and we've been getting little pieces of info, not, inf not even information, like, it, everything else has been kind of happening, it's like nothing significant in my eyes has happened, so, yeah, One Piece got to pull up the bronze, not, yet again, not bad chapters, just nothing to put, to kind of grab me like the other two have been doing, but with that, that's going to be the end of this week's Shonen Showdown, um, definitely tell me, tell me what you think of the chapters, um to like comment subscribe if you like the video my link tree is in the description below um like i said if you want to follow me on my socials my twitter my both well my other youtube because you're already following me on this youtube or you've already seen this youtube and my twitch account your boy is a recent twitch affiliate but anyway this has been shown in showdown and i've been your host the d20 signing out see you guys